Nomothai, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 83. The uh, name of the discourse is about King Makhadev. It's also known as Makhadev Sutta. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. Uh, so basically the context is that uh, Buddha was staying in Mithila in the Makhadev mango grove and uh, uh, Buddha smiled at a certain spot. So, Venerable Ananda asked to the Buddha that, uh, you know, what is the cause of this smile? Why are you smiling? Realized ones do not smile for no reason. So, he said, Buddha said, once upon a time, Ananda, there was right here in this spot, there was a just and principled king, a good king named Makhadev, who stood by his duty. He treated people very well uh, and he observed the Sabbath on these, these days. And uh, uh, basically, he asked his uh, barber that uh, my dear barber when you see gray hair growing on my head please tell me so after some years uh, the barber said saw the gray hair growing so he said that king the gray hair has has started growing the messengers of the gods have shown themselves to you that means the messengers of the gods are trying to tell you that now it's the time to uh, leave your uh, uh, the prince the kingly life and move towards homelessness right so and then he said, okay, uh, I'm moving to homelessness. He gave the barber a prize village and he asked his child, his son, to take over and then run the country. And uh, he, he went into, he said that now that I have enjoyed human pleasures. Now it's the time to seek the heavenly pleasures. That means the pleasure of meditation, the pleasure that we get in deeper sublime pleasures we get in meditation. So it's time for those pleasures right, uh, of a monastic life. Come dear prince, rule the realm. I shall shave off my hair and beard, dress in ochre robes and go forward from lay life to homelessness. And he said to his prince that you also do the same. Uh, watch out for the grey hair that is coming. And when you when the grey hairs come, then leave your uh, lay life and leave your kingly life. Hand it over to the pr prince, to your child. And then you also move and maintain this tradition. So what happened was that tradition after tradition, this was... This was maintained. Uh, then there was this, uh, in many, 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 many uh, generations, they maintained this tradition. Uh, but there was finally King Nimi who was there, who also was very just. He maintained the tradition. But he had this son named Kalanjaranaka. He didn't go forth. He didn't, he broke that tradition. So he was their final man. See, so he told his, so when King Makhadeva was there, he told his prince that don't be my final man. Keep passing on this tradition. Keep passing on your thing to the other person and you move to. But in, in case of uh, uh, King Nimi's son, this, this didn't happen. So King uh, Naka became the final man. So now Buddha is saying, Ananda, you might be thinking that surely King Mahadeva, from whom this good practice was founded, must be someone else at that time. But you should not see it like this. I myself was King Makadeva at that time. I was the one who founded that good practice, which was kept by those who came after. So Buddha is it's basically also having the reference in the Jatak tales that Buddha, ha, Buddha uh, was King Mahakadeva at that time who had set up that practice. Uh, now please understand the important thing that is coming out. That Buddha is saying, so what happened was King Mahakadeva, uh, when he died, he attained the Brahma realm. And all the people who died, they attained the Brahma realm because of the good deeds they did. But now see what Buddha said. But that good practice doesn't lead to disillusionment, disp dispassion, cessation, peace, insight, awakening and extinguishment. It only leads as far as rebirth in the Brahma realm. But rebirth in the Brahma realm. But now I have found it a good practice. See, rebirth in the Brahma realm doesn't guarantee, doesn't free you from suffering. Because once the merit is over, then you have to come back and take a lower birth in like the human realm or if you have committed misdeeds in the hell realm. So, it is definitely a more pleasurable life. and But it is not an answer to Buddha's question as to what puts an end to suffering completely. right? So, Buddha also in his various previous lives did a lot of good acts to reach that particular life when he born when he was born as a son to Prince uh, King Sadodhana where he practiced in the and finally achieved enlightenment and found the way to be free from this samsara, this continuous suffering, cycle of suffering. So Buddha says, but now I have found it through his enlightenment in that life, a good practice that does lead to disillusionment, dispassion, 
cessation, peace, insight, awakening and ext extinguishment. And what is that good practice? All of us want to know. Buddha says, it is simply this noble eightfold path. That is, right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness and right immersion. This is the good practice I have now found it that leads to disillusionment, dispassion, cessation, peace, insight, awakening and extinguishment. So friends, this is how, how beautiful this is. That Buddha is saying that you do all the good things in your life. Be just, be kind, right? Do all the good things. But it will, through merits, it will take you to the Brahma realm, but it will not free you from suffering. But Buddha found the final way to free oneself from suffering. And we are so lucky, friends, that, and maybe if you are reading, if you are watching this video right now, that we are, we are in Buddha's path, like we are following Buddha's path of this enlightenment, right? We, we are following the Buddha's noble eightfold path to free ourselves, to extinguish ourselves from this cycle, right? So let us have our full confidence in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha and keep moving forward. There is more to this. Uh, so he says, Ananda, Buddha says, Ananda, I say to you, you should all keep up this fruit practice. So Buddha is here referencing to the Sangha, right? The Sangha, see, Buddha, when Buddha left, he had to carry his teaching, so he created a Sangha, a company of spiritual practitioners who keep uh, the teachings alive, right? So, Buddha says, you all should keep up this good practice that I have founded. Do not be my final man. That means, keep this spiritual, you get extinguished through the practice, but keep this Dhamma, Dhamma wheel alive. Right? Whatever generation is current, when such good practice is broken, he is that final man. Ananda, I say to you, you all should keep up this good practice that I have found it. Do not be my final man. Beautiful, no? It's such beautiful thing that Buddha said. That's why friends, keep doing your practice. Be part of a Sangha and keep, keep motivated in your practice. So I hope this was useful. Do share your thoughts, your insights, your feedback in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.